this week we're going to uh, do some research related to economic geography. And one of the things that we're going to base this on is uh, this statement from um, the United Nations that identified 10 of the world's critical hotspots. Uh, this article was from uh, uh, 2015. But one of the things that was uh, interesting in this article was that uh, the uh, author stated that often the UN has to deal with one or two uh, international um, crises, and, and in 2015 and currently today, they have at least 10 major crises uh, going on, and it's a, a human, um, it's a drain on human resources and on financial resources. But we're going to look at uh, the economic development of um, a couple of these. You're going to choose one from a list that I'm going to give you. And we're going to look at uh, data from the CIA World Factbook and from an interactive map of economic freedom. And so I want to show you that map a little bit if I can figure out where I have it. Here it is. Um, let me pull that up for you. So this is a web-based map and it has different indicators uh, at the bottom and I'm scrolled out now to see the entire world and it also has some time uh, span so I could start this at 1995. Um, I can autoplay this so I could look at the development of the world um, overall scores on economic development over time. or I can just scroll to one time period. And you're going to do some data collection uh, related to these economic indicators. And so we're going to look at property rights. So uh, do people have the right to own property? Is a country free from corruption that tends to uh, uh, make economic relationships insecure or unstable? Is there fiscal freedom? That means is there a lot of taxes on people? Uh, government spending, uh, if the government spends a lot of money, that's considered kind of a negative or a burden. Uh, we're going to look at uh, regulations, how efficient government reg regulations are to support trade, uh, free trade markets, and uh, the ability people have to bank where they want or invest where they want. Um, and all of these, uh, th this, this idea of economic freedom, uh, let's see, where is that statement I'm looking for here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, here it is. It says um, that societies who have uh, what's considered high economic freedom tend to be uh, societies or countries that have uh, higher uh, rate of development or our improved quality of life. So the way this is going to work, I've done it, I've made an example for you. Um, you're going to collect data uh, and fill in some tables that I've created and then you're going to take a screenshot of uh, the country that you're researching, look up some other facts so that you can put it in context and discuss your findings. Uh, I've provided an example um, and the example that I'm using is Haiti. That's not one of the options that you have. So the countries that you can choose from are listed somewhere up here. Um, yes, Yemen, Ukraine, Dominic, or the Dominic Republic of, uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo. So you have the option of those three places to research. So basically, I've already filled in uh, data from uh, uh, the United States, both from the CIA World Factbook and from the Economic Freedom site. So let's take a look at how this works. So uh, we have a range that I like to think of as an A, B, C, D, or F range, depending, um, and uh, scores overall. Uh, so if I look at uh, the overall economic freedom map uh, of the world, that would be countries that receive an 80 to 100 score. Only a few of those, Australia, uh, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong. There may be 
Switzerland in here. I'm scrolling in. Yes, Switzerland is another one that would have the highest rating of economic freedom. And so the correlation would be they also have the highest quality of life or are the most developed countries in the world. And so what you're going to do is, uh, for instance, when I zoomed in on Haiti, um, I chose uh, business freedom. I guess it won't stay zoomed in. So Haiti has a zero to four nine business freedom. And so I entered that uh, in the table uh, for both years. So I went through 1995 and then I went through um, 2016. And then in the uh, World Factbook, um, I located uh, the data here. Part of it is under um, life expectancy, literacy rate are under the subsection of people. And if you use a control and an F, uh, you can get a search window on your browser if you're using Firefox. And you can type in, oh, let's type in uh, life expectancy and go up and it will find uh, the text that has that word in it. So that's a nice kind of fast way to search. So the life expectancy at birth in Haiti is 63.51. So I recorded that. Uh, I'm going to type in literacy. Oops, down here. And there's the literacy rate and it's 60.7. So you can see I added it there. And then I went down to the economic section, and there are several GDPs. You want to collect the information from the uh, per capita. So this is the amount of money uh, each person has per year to spend. Um, and you can see that in Haiti, that's about $1,800 a year. In the US, uh, it's $56,000 per year. So I bet you guys are all wondering, where's your $56,000? Um, anyway, so you're going to collect all of the this data. Um, and then you're going to create um, a screenshot showing the overall uh, ranking uh, from economic freedom. And then I want you to just summarize this um, based on uh, you can on the information we've had so far. So you can tell that Haiti is uh, also less developed because a large portion of its economy is in agriculture. Uh, as opposed to the United States, where we only have 1.6% of our uh, people employed in, uh, in agriculture. Uh, you can look at their uh, unemployment rate. So I just want you to discuss the data that you find on one of the three countries listed above. And you can talk about it with respects to the US. You also may need to do a little research uh, about the countries around your country uh, to put it in context.